I grew up on the west side of Youngstown. I have uh, seven brothers and sisters and uh, two stepbrothers. And uh, life was great when I was a kid. As we were growing up, uh, I can remember when, uh, when the whole thing started taking a turn. Uh, I was 12 years old. I was having my 12-year-old uh, birthday. I invited uh, everybody that I went to. I went to St. Brennan's and I invited everybody to this party. And uh, before you know it, uh, federal agents came in and arrested my father. And I was just devastated. And uh, the pain was grateful because my father was my hero. And uh, things started uh, spinning out of control. Uh, anger and all this stuff. And so what happened is my, uh, so my father gets a few years in prison. I, I started being uh, not a very good kid anymore. You know, I was angry, picking and choosing what I wanted to do as an athlete. So I started playing football and uh, a friend of mine and, uh, you know, every Friday night we started becoming weekend warriors and uh, we started drinking a little bit more. Before you know it, it, it started becoming troubling even in school. And I lost everything as far as uh, any connection with playing football at Bowling Green or Youngstown State. And uh, so now at this time, my mom don't want nothing to do with me. My brothers and sisters want nothing to do with me. And uh, you really only had my father. So I joined the Army. Be all you can be, I guess. And uh, when I joined the Army, uh, I went to ranger school, sniper school, all these different things. And uh, before you know it, uh, the drinking got to, uh, it manifested itself that I got myself into a lot of trouble. And so I flew home to Youngstown here and went to Neil Kennedy Recovery. And things were going real good. Uh, you know, I ended up uh, sober for a couple years and Colleen and I decided to get married and uh, we had these children and Anthony was already about four years old and uh, you know uh, life was working out but uh, the drinking was really taking place and I uh, started drinking so much that some nights I wouldn't, I wouldn't even come home and then before you know it the, the kids she would go to bar after bar looking for me. And uh, here I am spending all my money buying people drinks when we needed diapers, milk, and all this stuff. And uh, just selfish, very selfish. Never, never once contemplated with, the only time I ever said anything about God was, hey, you get me out of this mess and I promise you I won't do it again. I said, the only way I could stay sober is I, I kill myself. And I it just, that's the way I felt. I mean, I, I've tried and tried, I thought. And, uh, but I still never stepped over to the God part of this program. And uh, so what happened is, uh, you know, I, I got on this overpass and these trucks are driving by and I'm thinking, man, I can't do it. You know, my father had did it just a few years back prior to that, and my father had killed himself, and I just couldn't believe that. I started coming to Crossroads Church, and I started really with a smile on my face, and Pastor Dave, uh, Joe, Pastor Joe, and uh, it, was just, it was just a big change in my life, and things started really, you know, coming together, and, uh, you know, I just loved coming here. So I'd come here for almost every service, and even when they were on Saturday. And then I got baptized here, and it's changed my life. Now that I take a look back, my whole life, God's been there. 
he's been there and he, he's guided me this whole time. And, and the only way I was able to identify with the mixture of God and Crossroads Church, because they let me be me. And it's just, it just, my life has changed immensely.